Hey, hey, thanks for tuning in to the Just Janice podcast. I am your host, Janice, and we know that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. So in this joy-filled podcast, you're going to hear real-life stories from other believers. We're going to talk about the kingdom. We're going to magnify Jesus, and it's going to be awesome. So thanks for tuning in, and here we go. Hey, hey, everyone. I am so excited. For today's episode because I have my friend Janae Levan on the podcast with me today. Janae is a dynamic speaker and preacher, a certified mindset and confidence coach, author, and board certified Christian counselor. She resides in Houston, Texas, and her ministry is one that is marked by prophetic intercession, deliverance, healing, and revelation. She is the founder of the Thrive 365 Blueprint Signature Program that helps achieving individuals break barriers, master mindsets, and amplify their voices in order to help achieve their goals while enjoying fulfilling lives and launching profitable businesses. Welcome, Janae. Hello. How are you? So good. I'm so happy you're on here. I'm so excited for our conversation today. I just know it's going to be an awesome conversation and people are going to be really encouraged. So thanks for coming on. Yes. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. My joy. So I would love to start out this podcast like I do every time I have someone on with five fun facts just for people to get to know you. Are you up for that? I'm up for it. All right. So number one question, Janae, is what is something on your bucket list? That's a good one. Um, so I would say probably to be um, and to do a TED Talk. So um, I've always wanted to do uh, speak at different platforms and a TED Talk is something that I always um, admire those who um, get on those platforms. It can take a subject and the art of storytelling. I'm always in love with that. So definitely um, doing a, at least one TED talk before. I love that. And I'm believing with you in Jesus name. That's going to happen. Amen. I love that. <laughs> that's so fun. Okay. The next question is what is your favorite quote and or scripture? My favorite scripture would probably be Psalms 119, um, 130. And it says the entrance of your word brings forth light. And it gives understanding to the simple. Mm. Yeah. I love that scripture. Yeah. Write that down and put it, hang it up. Yeah. I love that. I love that. All right. Question three is if you could have a coffee date with anyone past or present, who would you choose? So for me, because I believe the whole Bible and that the Bible is true, it would be Job from the Bible. Yes, that is a super interesting answer. Yes, I would like speak to Job and be like, okay, listen, how did you, because with all of this pandemic going on, people are mourning family members encountering um, different transition in life. Like, how did you reach the point where you were literally solidified in the fact that no matter what happened through the losses, through the wins, through the gains, that I'm solidified in being sold out? Mm. Yeah, you can mic drop on that and be done with the. Po- that is so good. That is such an interesting answer. I've never had anyone answer that way, and I love I love that answer. Yes, and I'd be, and I'd be interested in his response too. Yes. I like that. <laughs> Who are your heroes slash role models? Definitely, um, my number one hero would be my grandfather. So my grandfather is um, ironically the first entrepreneur, and then I was the second. So it was a big old gap. But he's also Um, the only other preacher in my family and he's um, his, I was under his, uh, under his uh, truliage with pastoring. And so I, I was raised up under him. He taught me everything about the Bible. He taught me everything about faith and really living what it is that you preach. So definitely my grandfather, my mother, my, you know, uh, aunts and uncles, my grand, uh, my grandmother, my mother, um, but definitely my grandfather is a living hero for me. That's beautiful. And it's beautiful that now knowing that watching you live out his legacy. Yes. That on. Oh, definitely. My heart. I love <laughs> that. Okay. Last fun fact is what is one thing that God is teaching you in this season? Who patience. <laughs> Who patience. And I never, I thought that was a pretty patient person. He was like, no daughter, you're not, you're not. And especially when it comes to timing. So definitely the patience. And I think he's also teaching me a different way of listening to him which is simply through the stillness, Mm. which requires me to be still and not so anxious. And so definitely patience will be the main thing. You're the second person I've talked to today that said that God is teaching them about just being still in his presence. And I was 
And I was talking to her about that. The scripture says, be still and know that I am God. And like in the original language, that means to cease striving. And I know like you're like me, super ambitious person. So yeah. Like, okay, God, like, I don't want to just sit still. I want to be like moving. I want to be shaking. I want to be advancing the kingdom. And it's like, we're so much more fruitful when we do make sure that we are taking that time to sit still with him. And so good. Yeah, that's a, that, yeah. I love that. Such a good lesson. Okay, Janae, tell us about you. What is your story? Who is Janae? Yes, definitely. So um, I'm a small country girl from Kentucky. Um, I don't have any, you know, um, you know, big life story. My family was a normal, you know, middle aged family. Um, I have four brothers. Um, I'm the only girl. But one of the things I grew up in church from from a baby. And I was one of those people, people would be like, you can't do this. You're, you're Reverend Roberts's granddaughter. And I'll be like, what? And so even when I tried to go out and do stuff, people would not let me. And so I was like, this is just not fair. And, but I think when I got older, I, I just started to be grateful for the fact that God covered me and wouldn't allow me to do certain things and be like everybody. I've always stood out. I've always felt like I didn't fit in, but I literally fit right into where God would have me. And so, um, I am um, a counselor, as you already said. Um, one of the things that I absolutely love is empowerment and women and coaching, um, but ultimately being in his will. And so I've been through some things when it comes to having to end a, um, a public wedding engagement months before the wedding um, and having to walk through that publicly and privately, um, going through trying not to you know, commit suicide due to self-abuse and comparison and just a low self-esteem um, after that encounter, um, and so the Lord raising me back up and letting me know that even with those proclivities, that he still called me for a voice for this generation and even generations before me. And so um, I'm ultimately, without even all the titles, a daughter of God and one that just seeks to maintain my faith and to be in his will. So that is that is pretty much me. I love that. And I love how you hit on that at the end there that, hey, no matter what, if you took all the titles, strip them away. I'm a daughter of God. And I'm so a daughter you know who you are. And those other things are just like the fringe. Yes. <laughs> those things are just on the fringe. And I love that you talked about, you know, I don't have this crazy rocking story. Like, you know, I wasn't, you know, all these things. And so many times I have so many people in my life that are like, I don't have a story, you know, like yours. I haven't walked through divorce or I haven't done this and that. And it's like you, that is beautiful. That is beautiful that the grace of God kept you from having to experience those things and I think that that's something that a lot of people just misunderstand the power of their testimony and the power of being kept by God and how beautiful that is so oh so beautiful I love that I love that thanks yeah. for sharing all those things so as an author I love that you are also an author so tell us about what you have written and what has inspired you yes definitely so um I wrote my first book um, in 2019, I believe. And that's also when I launched um, shortly after that, my publishing company. Um, my first book is uh, The Spiritual Autopsy of a Backslider. And when everybody see, you know, hears that, uh, you know, that that title, The Spiritual Autopsy of a Backslider, and then they see the cover that goes along with it, they're like, OMG, I just got to get my hands on it. And pretty much with that, I, I walk through life with those who sometimes forget that just because um, you have backslidden or maybe you haven't walked the straight and narrow. A lot of times they believe that God has taken his hands off of them or has really left them to a reprobate of mind all of a sudden. And he tells us in the Bible that I am married to the backslider. And there's a lot of people who, you know, they, they don't know how to distinguish when they're going or, you know, turning away from God or when they're slowly slipping away. So that book ultimately gives you a rundown. You know, what is a backslider? How can you, do, how can you um, see those signs? You know, is it a lack of prayer? Is it a lack of conviction? Is it because the struggle is real, which is sexual sin? Um, is it a lack of faith because you put your belief in God and you, you know, you lost hope and you lost belief and you just lost all expectations? Whatever it is, it, it, there's different chapters um, my, you know, your mindset battling with depression and anxiety that many people don't talk about. So that book literally breaks down the different ways that people may find themselves in backslidden states. And it may not be all of them or they're, you know, or it's a way to prevent you. So if you find yourself lacking in prayer because you don't feel like that you're making any kind of, um, you know, a strategy or anything in prayer, it gives you those strategies in that. And so that's my first book. I'm actually working on a second book now, which is a devotional. Um, and so that'll be out um, probably in a month. And then I also have 
um, a journal that I actually uh, designed. It's called the Pursuit Bible Study Journal. Um, I designed that uh, due to a lot of women coming to me and saying, hey, um, I love, I want to read the Bible, but I don't know how to study it. So it's pages of just a Bible study guide with the SOAK method, which is um, scripture observation, um, your application, and then your, um, your kneeling in prayer, the SOAK method. Um, so those are the two that I have now and then a devotional on the way. Okay. For one, I need to get online and order both of those. And then I'm just throwing this out there. I've never done this. But the first person to DM me, I will buy you both of those. So first person to listen to this podcast this week and message me, we'll get that. Awesome. I love that. I love that. Love that. Okay. So you are passionate about mindset and confidence, which is like <laughs> bio. I was like, you are like my best friend. Okay. So what are some <laughs> practical, what are some practical ways that people can get into the right mindset and carry themselves with confidence? I think the really um, before you can get into the confidence, you have to start with the mindset. And so a lot of times I teach my clients the different, you know, growth mindset and fixed mindset. If you have a, a fixed mindset, you see every challenge and you allow that to stop you. It blocks you. You feel like that you can't go. It's like a mountain. But we know it's like, who are you great mountain that you cannot be moved? That's the mindset that you want. The growth mindset that says, I see you but I have some something or someone bigger than me, which is my father who can actually help me navigate. Not only that though, but just because it's a challenge does not mean that I can't get around it. So you have to have a growth mindset that says, this right here is absolutely nothing but my ability to show that I am not where I used to be and that I don't have to use the same strategy and I may have to seek the father and I may have to seek other resources to get around it. And so the mindset starts with you actually believing that you are who God says that you are, that the things that you said, because a lot of times things don't come from the enemy. They come from ourselves. We, we talk down to ourselves. Nobody's ever going to love me. I've been divorced. Nobody's ever going. I'm, I'm a single mother. I'm never going to be able to date someone who will marry me and love me with my kids. I'm, I'm too big. I'm too skinny. Um, whatever the case may be. So a lot of that stuff is self-sabotage and self-doubt, and that's really self-abuse. And so it starts in the mindset of believing that who God says that you are and speaking those things to yourself, speaking those things that are not as though they were, speaking those things in, into existence about yourself, you know, and not talking so down on yourself. The enemy does that enough. So when you have that mindset and you are speaking kind to yourself and you are being patient with, your, with yourself and you're extending grace to yourself as you do others, then that's where the confidence can develop. But it cannot develop with, a, with a, a negative mindset or a negative Nancy or a this is just how it is and it's always going to be like that. That type of mindset is always going to deplete you of your confidence. And so you have to start with the mindset and speaking speak well of yourself as the father also speaks well of you. That is so good. And I love that you hit on that, just having the heart, knowing the heart of God toward you. And as yes. someone who used to be that way, especially always self-sabotaging and have the worst self-confidence, horrible self-esteem. And then now like people are like, you are so confident. I get that all the time, but it's like, mm -hmm. I know who I am according to God's word. And I know his voice over me. And I choose to believe that no matter what anyone else says, no matter what, even my own thoughts sometimes. And I'm like huge. I'm like, people will ask like, well, what's your biggest pet peeve? Negative self-talk is like my biggest pet peeve. Yeah. And I will catch myself like once in a while, I'll say something. I'm like, mm, nope. I, I'll stop myself and I'll replace it with the truth. Yeah. And um, that's so, that's so powerful. So yeah. powerful. So what are some rewarding testimonies that you've had with your ministry? Wow. Um, I've had um, countless number of testimonies. Um, one, one time I was believing God. I said, you know, I think a lot of times as Christians, we pick and choose what we believe in the Bible. And I'm just one of those people that literally still believe in miracle signs and wonders. And I was preaching at a church in Tennessee and there was um, an older, an older woman that came and she had a cane and somebody else prayed for her. And I had finished ministering and the Lord would not allow me to leave her alone. And I went over there and I was just like, you know, um, what's wrong with you? And she said that she hadn't, you know, she just got back walking and um, other things. And I asked her if I could touch her leg. And so the Lord allowed me to pray for an anointed. And I asked her if she didn't mind, you know, giving up her cane and trusting God. And she looks and the church look like they must not know who she is. She don't walk. And she took off walking. And it was one of the most beautiful sights because 
it it let it, I think it built the faith not only of her but of the whole entire congregation to know that God is still yet working, and if He can do this big thing for her, it can be something small for me. Um, so I will always remember that one in the miracles of God, um, and that He is a, a yet alive God. He's not He's not just the the God of our four uh, forefathers, but He's the God of now. Um, and one of the ones and many that a lot of people come to me with is when I, I, I mentioned my broken engagement um, and I did have had a broken engagement a few years ago, about 2018 or so. And it was public, you know, the relationship was public. And so eventually my broken engagement had to go public and the Lord had me to end that with just pretty much a word from him. And I battled back and forth and I was like, Lord, you know, I don't even have a real reason. And it was other things, but ultimately he was like, I just need you to trust me. And when he told me that I, I did, I trusted him. And there were so many women that were like, I wish I would have done what you would have done. I, but I already had the invitations and I didn't want people to say nothing. There were gentlemen that said the same exact thing. And then there were those who said, because I remember what you did years ago, I prayed, I fasted. And we did not go through with it. And it was the best thing that could have happened because I would have ended up in divorce. And that right there lets me know that obedience literally saved my life, but it also saved the lives of others. And so testimonies like that lets me know like, hey, you do, do you do hear from God and what you do is not in vain. So it's just amazing to hear just multiple testimonies um, regarding the ministry. I love that. And I know you have so, so, so many. We could probably talk for four hours yeah. just about those. And I love that too, because God has been showing me so much. Like you have no idea. I hear this all the time in my spirit. Like you have no idea the ripple effect of your yes. Yes. And even just like last Friday, I got to minister at a home where, uh, I don't know what exactly what it's called, but it's a home where women who, it's like an alternative for going to jail or prison. So these women have been in prostitution and, and drug addicts and things like that. And and um, I'd gotten invited to speak and the lady who hosted me was like, how many of you guys have this devotional here? And one of the ladies goes, I do. I read it every day. And that like, blessed me so wow. much. And I'm like, I had no idea that there, that, you know, that, that someone here was reading and you just, you have no idea yeah. the impact of your yes to God and just the ripple effect that it has, not only on those people that you're in direct contact with, but then the people that they impact and then the people that they impact. So it's beautiful. I love that. So true. I love what you're doing and, and honor and bless what you are doing in your ministry and absolutely love and admire it. Obviously that's why I'm having you on my podcast. <laughs> and so keep doing it, sis. Thank you. Yeah. So tell us about, tell us about thrive 365. Yes. Thrive 365. That is my signature uh, blueprint program. It is a group program that I do quarterly um, for men and women. And what we do is um, a lot of the, uh, participants, they come with either no business idea or they have multiple ideas that they need to niche down. And so I deal with them, um, number one, on the mindset and the confidence that they can, you know, um, develop a business idea and whatever that may be. It may be a business. It may be writing a book. Um, I had someone come in. She um, had no idea left out of there with a whole boutique uh, within six weeks. And it was amazing. And so Pretty much we deal with the mindset and the confidence, but I'm really very much um, uh, uh, pushed into especially finding your voice and owning your voice. I tell them all the time that you should always say that my voice is one of my favorite ones to hear. Um, I don't know about you, but I always when I hear myself preach, I'm like, oh, no, turn it off. No, I used to do that all the time. <laughs> And I'm like, I am not listening to that. And then the Lord, he really, you know, rebuked me for that. And he was like, no, like if you want other people to hear what you say, you have to start learning and loving the voice that I put into you like Moses. You know, Moses said, I can't do this. I stutter, you know. And so I really uh, hone into loving your voice and speaking with authenticity and speaking with authority. And if somebody comes to tries to give you a Kanye West moment with Taylor, and try to take the mic away, you take the mic back and you say what you need to say, you know? And so I always make sure that people understand that. And then I give them the proper tools on how to register their business, how to um, have a business plan and strategies and how to prepare for marketing and launching because my background is communications and marketing. Um, and so I put all of that into one big program, six week program. And it's exciting to see those start with no business, um, no idea, no plan, no websites to full websites. 
um, becoming graphic designers almost before we even leave out the program. So that's ultimately it's giving you the ability to thrive in every aspect of life, business and ministry as well. That's amazing. And I'm going to definitely put all of your links and everything so that people can get in contact with with everything that you're doing awesome in the show notes so people can do that easily. So Janae, do you have any other for, okay, back to that though. First love what you're doing. That's amazing. And I love, I love, love, love when people's ministry is about empowering other people and seeing them <laughs> advance and their gifts and their calling. So it's beautiful. I yeah. love it. So Janae, do you have any other encouragement on your heart for the podcast community? Yeah. You know, we're all, you know, going through times, um, and I think it's just unprecedented times, but I think, you know, we've been prepared for it as, as Christians, but even for those who felt prepared, it can be a little bit weary. So ultimately it's really simple, but to, you know, don't grow weary in your well-doing. Um, don't grow weary um, in your faith. And even when you feel like your faith is fainting, you know, lean into God, lean into worship. Don't allow the enemy to get a foothold on you and make you believe that you've been forgotten about or that your time is lost or, you know, I should have been this far. That's the thing that I hear a lot. You know, I'm this far, I'm this age and I should have been more, but ultimately know that wherever you are and where God has you is exactly where you are supposed to be. And anything that is for you will find you. You don't have to go searching or uh, bribing for, you don't have to do any of that. All you have to do is to be still and to know, and you don't have to strive for his love. It doesn't matter what you've done. Um, even, you know, as I'm speaking now, I feel like that there's somebody who is going to listen to this or is listening to this now that shame has even um, grabbed a hold of you. And I want you to know that shame is not from God. Condemnation is not from God. Um, if, 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 it's, if you're being condemned, it's the enemy. But conviction pulls you closer to God. And so, you know, know that whatever you've done, however you feel that, you know, you let God down, know that that has not made his love stop from you or his grace um, taken from you. Grace abounds and grace continues and his love continues and covers you. And so I just want you to ultimately be encouraged and know that God is still yet working and he is still not done with you. And I believe seriously that the best is yet to come. Mm, that is so encouraging. So encouraging to me. And I know everyone who's listening is going to be super encouraged by those words. So thank you for that. You're welcome. So how can listeners stay connected with you? So I'd love for you to give all your plugs, tell them how they can connect with you, especially your TikTok, because that's how yeah. I found you. Tell them about your TikTok. So encouraging. Oh. Love your TikTok. And then uh, would you be willing to pray for the podcast community? Yes. Awesome. I didn't even know that. So yeah. Awesome. So yes, on TikTok, I haven't been on there in a while, but I'm going to get back to it. So TikTok is, I think it's Janae. Uh, yes. Yeah, Janae Levine, um, L-A-V-O-N. So Janae Levine. Um, my Facebook is Janae Levine, as well as um, my Instagram. So everything is Janelle Levine. Um, if you're interested in the books or, um, the, um, or the journal, um, my website is Janae And I will actually go ahead and if Janice can give a code, um, I will actually put a code on there, um, for $5 off of those as well for the podcast. Awesome. Yeah. We'll definitely link all of those things in the show notes too. So check them out. And gosh, Jenny, thank you so much for taking time out of your night to be on here. I so appreciate this. And I was encouraged and inspired just listening to you talk. I'm like, I just want to have her on here and just hit record. Just like, go ahead, Jenny, just talk a little <laughs> Let me listen to you. <laughs> so inspiring. I love what you're doing for the kingdom. And I know that God is going to continue to just expand your influence. And I'm excited to watch, watch what you're doing and just cheer you on from afar. So thank you. And I can definitely pray as well. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Um, Father, I, uh, we first thank you for being who you are. You're so awesome. Um, you know, you're so omnipotent. You're so all knowing. You're so faithful, so consistent, the most consistent thing in our lives. And for that, we say thank you, God. I thank you for Janice, her platform, her voice, her light um, that she is to the world and even those who have yet to even know her. Um, God, I pray for those who are listening to this podcast and those who they will share it with. I pray now that you would just put your hand upon them, comfort them where they are weak. God, build them up, God, where they are torn down. God, I pray for everybody who is dealing with even any mind-binding spirits now. And I say that their their hold be loose and I um, I release and uh, loose joy to them, peace to them, long-suffering to them. God, give them a new 
uh, a new meaning of life. Allow them to know that you have not forgotten about them, that there is still work for them to do in their hands, in their mouths, in their feet, Father, and that whatever their feet should go and their feet should tread upon, God, that you will be there. God, I thank you that you are covering them, their families. God, if there's anybody dealing with any kind of sickness, God, your word said that your word, that you sent your word and that your world healed them. So allow your word to heal even where they are. Even if it's not a physical healing, God, touch them in the inner parts of their being. Go into the recesses of their souls and God, deal with the heartbreak, deal with the grief, deal with the loss, deal with whatever it is that they're dealing with, knowing that there is nothing too small for you. And anything that we can't handle, we know that you can. So we take our hands off of it. And God, we say that every burden that we have carried longer that we are, than we are supposed to, God, allow us to give it up now and trust that you are God. So God, we lean into Proverbs 3 and we say that we would trust in the Lord with all of our heart and we will lean not to our own understanding, which is, um, uh, which is very limited. But God, you are so, so unlimited. So we lean into you. We honor you. We thank you. And we trust you with our now as much as we trusted you with our present and in the futures to come. We honor you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The Just Janice podcast is part of the NRT Podcast Network. To find other great podcasts in the network, visit newreleasetoday.com. Be sure to connect with me on Facebook and Instagram at Just Janice Podcast.